Hi, I'm Sophia, and this is The Geek Group. We're doing another lesson in sewing today. I've got my tools in front of me for today's lesson, which is going to be on taking a shirt and a skirt and making them into a long coat. This technique can actually be used to make a coat that's open in the front, or you can make a dress out of it too by combining a skirt and a shirt together. So it's a pretty versatile technique. What I'm gonna need today is a measuring tape, some ribbon, chalk, my awesome scissors, snips to cut thread, pins, and of course, our safety dinosaur. Incidentally, for a more advanced technique, I might also be using this tiny scrap of elastic left over from yesterday. Now, the two pieces of clothing that I've picked out are a shirt that ties in front, it's kind of a wrap, so you wear it over something, and a skirt. This is what the shirt looks like. It's got a lacy edge to it and little cap sleeves. That's what this kind of sleeve is called, a cap sleeve. It's made out of cotton, which is one of my favorite fabrics because it's easy to wash and take care of and it lasts a long time. It's fairly cool to wear. Um, I'm gonna prepare this shirt by doing fairly minimal things. It has an elastic waistband, but the elastic's pretty worn out. And the elastic is sewn in through these stitches here and attached with a tie. So what I wanna do is take those stitches out with my seam ripper and then pull the elastic all the way out and replace it with a ribbon. That's what I'm gonna do first. Once again, to use the seam ripper, you put the sharp pointy end of the seam ripper underneath the seams and slide it down to the bottom where the razor cuts the actual threads without harming the fabric. On a piece of fabric like this, where the thread and the fabric are the same color, it can be a little challenging to just get those threads. But I'm doing okay. If I really had to, I could take out the casing, but it looks like everything's attached, so it's gonna be easy to pull this all the way out. I just have to release the other side. I'm trying to do this so that you can see it on the camera. Most items of clothing don't come made this way very often. They usually just have a drawstring or elastic, not both like this one does. Once I've released a couple of stitches, I can pull on it. You have to be careful with your seam ripper though because it is possible to cut through your fabric fairly easily and you can ruin your project that way. Haha. -ha. So now I'm going to do the reverse of what we did last time, putting the elastic in the waistband. I'm going to pull the elastic out of this waistband. One of the reasons I'm doing this is that the elastic was worn out, so it wasn't gonna be lasting much longer. And secondly, I wanted to be able to pull it as tight around the waist as I wanted, and before, it would only go as much as the elastic would go. I'm gonna put this aside for later. I don't know if I'm gonna use it, but I could pull off the cotton ends and turn them into bows if I really felt like I needed bows. Sometimes you need bows. So now I have 
a much easier piece of clothing to work with. Everything's going to lie flat. <clears throat> It'll be a lot easier for me to measure how wide this bottom space is going to be now that I've taken the elastic out. And that's going to be important for later, so that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to lay it out flat first. That makes more sense. I am not going to start with the end that begins with 60, because that will be really confusing later. Every once in a while, I do this, and I measure from the wrong end of the measuring tape, and then my numbers are way off, and I think, my god, how did I lose all that weight? Okay, so this piece is about 39 inches long. If I stretched it out, it's probably 40. I wasn't pulling on the fabric very hard, so on my notation, I'm gonna write 39 to 40. I'm gonna put this piece aside now and start work on the skirt. Our design idea for today is to take this vest, which looks approximately like this, and has a tie right there, and to attach a skirt to it that's open in the front so that we get kind of a long coat-like object. Very bohemian. I love a bohemian design. The only sewing we're going to do is to hem the front of this skirt, which will be the rolled hem you need to know, and to sew the skirt to the shirt itself. But that means I have to cut the skirt. This skirt is an A-line design. That's the name of the shape that is used in this skirt. Even though it doesn't actually make an A, it's called an A skirt, A-line skirt. And it's basically a trapezoid. If I were to draw it on the same piece of paper, the basic shape is one we talked about yesterday. It's a very shallow curve. It goes straight out at an angle and then a matching curve at the bottom. If I put two of those together, I have an A-line skirt. If I put six of those together, I get a wrap skirt. If I put four of them together and put elastic at the top, I have a gathered skirt. So this shape is used over and over and over again in sewing, and you can actually buy a pattern that has eight different skirts in it, and it's really just this piece in multiple different combinations. To four, six, eight. Depends on how big you want your skirt to be. If you're making a ball gown or a quinceanera dress, you're going to have lots of them, maybe 10. And you can control how much fabric is around your waist by how big this space is up here. You just need to know that when you sew all your pieces together from here to there, let's say A to B has to go all the way around your person. So if you have four of these, then you want each one to be about one quarter of your waist size. If you have 10 of them, you want each one to be about one tenth of your waist size to make it flush, and more than that if you want it gathered at the top. This is where math comes in again. By the way, 
I picked this up at the thrift store for $4, and it's made of linen, which is a really, really high quality fabric. It wears well, it looks great, you do have to iron it. This is actually a linen rayon blend, so I won't have to iron it as much. But that's one of the things I really like about shopping in thrift stores, is I can find really high quality clothes for really reasonable prices. Now, I could just cut along the seam on the side of this skirt, but because it's an A-line, I'm going to do something a little more advanced. If you're not an advanced sewer, cutting up the seam on one side and using that as the front of your jacket is totally fine. No one's going to know but me. But I'm going to do a slightly more advanced technique because it'll lay flatter when it's on a person. And uh, the first thing I have to do is cut off the top. There's some elastic in here. It's pretty good elastic. I might save it for later. I'm actually going to cut just above this pleat. There are a set of three pleats in the fabric right there and right here. And I'm going to cut just above those. Um, I'm going to eyeball it because I'm really good at that. But if you're not good at eyeballing things, you should probably measure it. If I was going to measure it, I would lay the skirt flat like this. I would take my handy chalk. I would take an object like this pin box and I would put the pin box or I suppose I could use like an actual measuring tape against the uh, threading at the top end of the pleats and mark a blue line and just go all the way around and then I would cut along the blue lines. In fact, this is such a great technique. I may do it. I don't know if you can see the blue lines. Let me try them in white to see if that works out better for you. Now I know, I just need to go from chalk mark to chalk mark, but I have to do the other side as well. Incidentally, this fabric is a bias cut fabric. That means that the threads that are woven together, they are in the diagonal. You can actually see them in this pattern, which is one of the reasons I chose this skirt. These plaid lines follow the fabric, um, follow the threads of the fabric. Now, you have to be careful when using bias cut fabrics, or if you are buying fabric at the store and you are cutting a pattern on the bias, which means with the threads diagonal um, across the piece of fabric instead of up and down with the piece of fabric or with the, the pattern itself. And the reason for that is when something is cut on the bias, it has a lot more give. There's a lot more play in the fabric. It can move like this much more easily. And that means that you can get ruffling at the edge because it'll stretch out more easily. And you have to really be careful when you're sewing it down and have lots of pins if you want it to be smooth later. I just want you to be aware of it. Cutting on the bias is a really good technique because the clothes hug your form better. Um, they hang better off the body. They conform to the curves of the body. 
but they can be a little tricky to work with when you're trying to sew. All right, I've got my marks. They're not super dark, but you can kind of see them on the screen. And I'm just gonna cut along them. Now I have to be careful not to cut more than one piece of fabric at a time with my super awesome sharp scissors. I could put a ruffle on this and make a mini skirt. In fact, I could take a valance from a uh, curtain, uh, like a kitchen curtain, which you can find at thrift stores all the time, that are already ruffled, and I could sew it to the bottom of this and make a mini skirt. In fact, I happen to have some over there, so if there's time, I may do that just to show you how easy it is. Right now, I have a skirt with a really wide top. Now, I know that this is about 40 inches, and this is gonna be way more than 40 inches. In fact, let's find out exactly how wide it's gonna be. Remember, we have to double this measurement because it's folded over. So this is gonna be about 50 inches wide because it's 25, and then you multiply that by two. I want to find the center of this fabric between the two seams on the side. And I'm going to cut down the middle. I think I have a guide right here. There's a seam on this one ruffle, and I think this seam lines up with the middle, but I'm going to find out for sure. I'm going to show you how to do that. I had to take the elastic off before I could use this technique. But what I'm going to do is line up the seams. and then I'm gonna pin them down. Here's the seam. And here's this seam. Here's the seam and here's this seam. I can feel them under my fingers. Inexplicably, there is no side seam on this one ruffle. They were probably trying to save money by using all the fabric they could. And since this ruffle is just a big rectangle, they put the seam wherever it fell. So I'm going to have to just fake it. Now, this is the side nearest me that I care about. 
now that I've got the seam sorted out, I know that wherever the fold falls, that is exactly halfway down the front. Now, it's a little bit wonky because this fabric is A, cut on the bias, and B, it expands. So this piece is smaller than this piece, which is gathered here to take up the difference. And this piece is smaller than this piece, which is gathered here to take up the difference. So I'm really going to have to zhuzh this line. I'm going to pin it, and then I'm going to iron it so I have a nice, really clear, defined line to cut along. It doesn't help that this is a bias and uh, that I can stretch the fabric in a couple different ways. I'm going to put this aside and get my iron ready. Now, my iron is set to linen. Uh, your iron may look different, um, but mine's set to linen, which means it's going to be as hot as it can get. That's because linen needs a really hot iron to make any difference. If I was going to be ironing something like silk or polyester, uh, I would use a much lower setting. And usually, irons are marked for the fabric type. Okay, I have a nice sharp line now, so I'm ready to cut. Now I need to take out all the pins. Even the ones holding the center together. So now what I have is a nice big piece of fabric. <laughs> I've got an edge on this side, and it goes around to the back, and then I've got an edge on this side. And what I'm going to be doing is putting a rolled hem on that piece that I just cut. I'm actually going to iron this rolled hem in, but I'm going to show you how to do a rolled hem first. You've already done one if you did the other projects. So, let me keep my head out of the way. A rolled hem goes like this. You fold the fabric over once, and then you fold it over one more time. This traps the fibers that might unravel inside the, the fold of the fabric, so there's nowhere for them to go, and they tend to not unravel for that reason. And then we're going to sew down right at the edge of that fold. When you're a beginner sewer, it's really helpful to iron this fold in before you pin it and before you sew it. It'll just hold everything together, especially with this bias fabric that can move so much in different directions depending on how you're pulling on it. Um, so uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. When you're a more advanced sewer, you don't need to iron it at all. You don't even need to pin it. You can do it automatically. And if you have a fancy schmancy sewing machine, you probably have an attachment that'll do this for you.
That was my first fold. And now I'm going to do the second one. I'm making this super big so you can see it. But <laughs> when you have an attachment, it's like an eighth of an inch. <laughs> or you can get the like quarter inch attachment. I think I have the half inch attachment for my sewing machine. I use it all the time because it makes a really neat rolled hem. Now that I have that rolled hem in, I'm going to pin it in place. I especially want to pin down these pleats because they're a little big. The less experience you have with sewing, the more pins you should use. Now, this little corner is not as neat as it could be. I could do a little thing to make it neater. I'm going to show you what that is. I could fold this over into a triangle and then fold it and then. Let me, let me do that so you can see. Here it is unfolded. I'm going to fold that over into a triangle. Then I'm going to fold it the way I've ironed it and one more time. And that makes the end a little bit neater. It's not necessary, it's just advanced sewing techniques. We got something for everybody in this video. This is something you should be aware of. I caught the fabric in a weird way with my pin and you don't want that to happen. You wanna make sure that the other side is smooth. So I'm gonna repin this. Let me do that so you can see. Now if I flip it over, it's smooth. See that? Smooth. Because I have all these pins in here, I could go and film, uh, or I could go and iron the other side before I sewed anything and just do all the sewing at once, but I find that if I do that, I tend to poke myself. So I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and sew this down. So I have my machine set on a straight stitch, just a regular old straight stitch. And I'm going to make an effort to sew really close to the fold that I have here. Um, it's gonna be just like last time, just along the fold.
I went back and forth at the beginning and the end to knot the thread. Okay, one side is done. Now I'm gonna go back to the table and finish up the other side. I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Probably not gonna talk very much while I'm doing it because I've already explained. Okay, after I take these pins out, the next thing I'm gonna do is zigzag this top edge. It's not necessary for the design that I'm doing today, but it's always a good idea when you have a loose weave linen in a bias cut. Look at all the vocabulary you're learning in this class. You'll be able to sound so informed when you go to the fabric store. Everyone will think you have been sewing forever. I'm going fast. if you can see this on the camera, but this is how much stretch a bias cut can have. So I can have this fabric that wide and I can stretch that same fabric all the way to there with a bias cut. This is how a bias cut conforms to your body, but it can also mess you up when you're trying to sew things together. I definitely want to make sure while I'm doing the zigzag stitch that I don't have any weight stretching out this piece of fabric while I'm zigzagging. Though to be perfectly honest, the zigzagging will do some of that no matter what I do. If I had a piece of fabric that I absolutely positively required it not to stretch, one technique I could use is to put a piece of paper, just printer paper, on the bottom, underneath the fabric, between the fabric and the plate of the sewing machine, and I could sew the fabric to the paper. The paper won't stretch, so I have to pin the paper to the fabric. I can't just lay it there. But the fabric won't stretch um, if it's pinned to the paper and the paper won't stretch, but then you have to, like, painstakingly pull the paper off or soak it in water and dissolve the paper. They actually have special paper that's really expensive that you can buy in quilting stores and fabric stores that dissolves in water if you need to secure something when you're sewing it. Um, that's a really advanced technique though. I can't imagine anything you'd be making as a beginner sewer where that would be important, but I'm just telling you what's out there. do next is sew this lovely linen plaid to our cotton shirt. Now there are a couple of places where I could put it. I could put it above the gather line or below the gather line. I can't put it on the gather line. That's got to be open so that I can put the ribbon through. I'm going to put it below the gather line because that's the easiest. Thank you. 
I'm going to be sewing this to the wrong side of the fabric. I know it's the wrong side because I can see the seam. Here is the seam. On the right side, it's all pretty. It's got pin tucks. These are pin tucks, by the way. These tiny little pleats, those are called pin tucks. They're traditional in Victorian clothing, and we still use them today when we're trying to be fancy. This is the wrong side. Now, I'm going to uh, be arranging this fabric in a way that may not be immediately obvious, but I'm gonna show you why I have to do it that way. If this were a costume that I was only gonna wear a couple times in a production and then throw away, I might just sew the skirt down right there along the zigzag line just right there. I'd have lots of dirty ends here, but I wouldn't care because it's a costume. I'm not gonna wear it very often. But because of what we're doing today, I wanna make this a little bit nicer. I'm actually going to create a casing for the top edge of the skirt with the skirt. I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now, ultimately, I need the right side of the skirt and the right side of the top to be the same, going in the same direction so that when I put it on, people only see the right sides. That means I have to flip the skirt over towards me. Now, in front of me, the yellow shirt is upside down and I'm seeing the wrong side. The skirt, to me, is right side up and I'm seeing the right side. I can tell by the pleats. I'm gonna line up the zigzagging on this skirt with the bottom of the casing on the yellow shirt. And that's where I'm actually gonna sew is right along here. Now because this skirt is a little bit longer than the yellow uh, shirt, I'm gonna start at the two ends and work towards the middle. It'll be helpful for me to know exactly where the middle of the yellow shirt is and where the middle of the skirt is. So I'm gonna figure that out right now. To figure out where the middle of the skirt is, I just put the two ends together and fold it and wherever the fold is, that's the middle. There's the middle, right there. I'm gonna mark it with a pin. You can mark it with chalk. Chalk is also good. The only problem with chalk is that sometimes it rubs off while you're working. I'll do both. The only problem with the pin is sometimes the pin comes out. Now to figure out where the middle of this shirt is, I really only need to line up the two seat side seams. And I need to remember, so this is what I'm doing, side seam, side seam. I'm putting them right on top of each other. I do need to remember to kind of pull it out though, because it's wrinkled from having been gathered for so long. So if I don't pull it out, I'm not gonna get the right middle. In fact, I wanna hold it here, hold the side seams together and I wanna put my finger inside and press out. And that is gonna be the middle. Notice I use the blue chalk because the blue will show up better on the yellow than the white will. I'm gonna mark it on both sides. The nice thing about chalk is that it comes right out, sometimes while you're working. All right, so once again, the yellow is upside down with the wrong side towards me. And here, I've already started to make a mistake. I've got the right side up. <laughs> wrong side towards me, upside down.
the skirt is going to be right side up and uh, with the right side towards me. I've secured the middle, and what I want to do now is work from the outside. I also want to make sure that I line up the zigzag above this line here, which is where I'm going to be uh, sewing. It's no good if I sew on the other side of the zigzag. So this is as wide as the yellow fabric is, and you can see that the plaid fabric's quite a bit wider. We have some options there, we could gather it, but what I'm gonna teach you how to do is pleat, because it's not that much, but you could gather it. I'm gonna end up pleating it right in the center back to give room for your badunka badunka. This is a totally defective pin. I'm kind of trying to be careful not to stretch that plaid fabric while I put it down. But quite frankly, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. Okay, so I'm gonna work on the box pleat right now. The way I do that is I bring this fabric all the way to that center pin. I'm gonna pin it all the way to the center pin. On both sides, right now I'm doing the right side. You can see that I've got those two pins right next to each other. And then I'm gonna fold this back like that. And secure it. 
I'm going to do the exact same thing to the other side. I'm going to pin this all the way up to that center pin. And then I'm going to fold it back. and secure it. That's a box pleat. It's looking pretty good. Uh, this is the wrong side of the box pleat when, um, or this is the top of the box pleat, so you won't be able to see it in the actual outfit because this ruffle will be over it, but um, I could use, I could box pleat it in the other direction, which would look like this, uh, where the fold is the main fabrics underneath and these two folds come together. Instead, I'm doing the main fabric on top and the two folds way out to the side. That's just two different ways you can do a box pleat. Okay, I am ready to sew this down. I'm going to be using a straight stitch. And I'm going to try really hard to just stay just to the left of the zigzagging that I've done. I do have to be careful not to get any fabric caught underneath. So I'm going to be checking it fairly regularly and I'm going to be feeling for it with my fingers. the camera can catch this but that is so bad I have to redo these pins because I totally caught the top of the yellow blouse in the pins when I was putting them in and if I had just kept sewing I would have to take that all out I should have checked this before I sat down at the machine All clear. I'm gonna need the iron again. So I'm gonna turn it back on. I'm gonna take out all my pins and see how everything looks.
All right, that's looking pretty good. You can see nothing got caught up. I did cut into the casing just a little bit right here, but I got plenty of room for my ribbon, so it's not a problem. And what I'm gonna do now is iron this flat. The next thing I'm going to do is secure that seam. I have some choices. I can sew on this side or I can sew on that side. I mean, ultimately, I'm sewing on both sides. But when I put it through the machine, I have a choice of which side to go on. I'm choosing the yellow side because that's the side we're all going to see when I wear the garment. And I want to make sure it's really neat on that side. If something gets caught up a little bit in the back, I'm not going to worry too much about it because no one will see that but me when I put it on. So I'm going to start from the other side and I'm going to pin the yellow down to the skirt and then I'm going to sew over it. If I want to be super advanced, I'm going to tuck this in end in and secure it with a pin on this side. Just like that. But most of my pins are going to be on the other side. I don't have to do much here. I really am just making sure everything's lying flat. Should do that anyway because I just ironed it on both sides.
What this does is it traps those little ends, that end piece of the skirt part, inside this fabric. On the one side, it'll have plaid, and on the other side, it'll have yellow. And that will keep those ends from coming out. It'll look neater. It'll last longer. That's why we're doing it. gonna tuck this edge in. There's hardly any edge there to tuck, but I'm gonna do it anyway and secure it with a pin. Okay, so when I go back to the machine, I'm gonna sew along this line here. I'm gonna be about a quarter of an inch from this casing piece and that'll just secure everything in place. Conveniently enough, the quarter inch measurement is the edge of the presser foot, so I'm really just gonna run the presser foot against the edge of the casing, and then it'll be nice and even all the way down. I am gonna have to keep checking that I don't have fabric in the wrong place. Nothing's been folded over and gotten caught in a pin, and I'm gonna use a straight stitch. It just hit where the fold was, <laughs> the, uh, the box plate. Okay, I'm going to uh, move over to the table and show you what 
everything looks like. So what we have here is a nice full skirt underneath and a little coat on top. You can see there's still some squiggles down here, some raw edge that is peeking through, but that's not important. It's fine. It's not going to come undone. The majority of the fabric, it's secured inside this case that we made with our stitching. Uh, it actually looks really nice. By the way, this piece right here is called a peplum. They're very popular right now on the bottoms of shirts for ladies. Um, they uh, come out of the bustle era um, and a little bit before that, but uh, that's called a peplum, that piece at the bottom. So the only thing we need to do now is to put a ribbon through this piece right here, this casing that was there from the original garment. We're going to do that with a safety pin and some ribbon. Now, I wanted to show you a more advanced technique for using a ribbon as a drawstring. And that is to put a piece of elastic in between. And the value of putting a piece of elastic in between the back of the ribbons is that you can tie it really tight, but then you also have some give there so that when you're moving, the coat just stays on you really nicely and you don't have to tie it so tight that it cuts into your skin. So in order for us to do that, we're gonna have to measure off enough ribbon to go all the way through the garment and then come out on the both sides. And since we know the garment's at least 40 inches wide, we're gonna want it to be 40 inches. We don't need it to be longer than 40 inches because we're adding this piece of elastic, which is a lot longer. So we'll have plenty of ribbon. I could get away with doing less than 40 inches of ribbon, depending on how much ribbon I have. So this is the last project I'm using ribbon on, I think. There we go, 40 inches. And I'm gonna cut this ribbon in half. I'm gonna sew each side of the ribbon, one ribbon to this end and one ribbon to this end of the elastic. So I'm gonna go over to the sewing machine and do that right now. Okay, so all I have to do now is slide this through my casing and uh, my garment will be done. <clears throat> now, the really nice thing about having two finished garments to sew together is that you don't need to hem anything. I'm getting all these tuck pleats and I didn't have to do any work to make them. So that's an advantage. To put the, case, the ribbon in the casing, I'm squishing the fabric along the safety pin and pulling out the back. I don't have to secure the other end because I'm not gonna pull it all the way through accidentally like the skirt we worked on last time. That won't happen, so I don't need to pin the other end.
I want to make sure the elastic is at the back of the garment and the ribbons are on the sides. There we go. This is also something you have to do when you're using elastic. You want to zhuzh it so that it lies flat. And mostly that's just a matter of kind of massaging it flat. This is no roll elastic, so that will help you. If you are using elastic that does roll, it would be harder because the elastic would just roll on you. It would, it would roll, it would fold in the middle. twist it over. See if I can use a cheap way of fixing it. Okay, flat, flat, flat. I'm not doing anything fancy. I'm just sort of grabbing the fabric and rotating it around the elastic, which is giving me a terrible time. Let's see if I can't do it this way. Okay, now everything seems to be flat, so I'll pull it back in. Nope. This is excessively problematic elastic. This normally doesn't happen. There we go. And voila. Take the pin out of each end. Well, just that one end. Tie it in a knot. If you're serious about your ribbon, you should run it over a candle flame. Don't catch it on fire and burn your fingers. But just a little heat from the candle flame will, will melt the end so it doesn't unravel. And Our beautiful coat is done. Here is the back with a little peplum and some lace edging. And here is the front. It ties in a bow around the waist. You can gather it as much as you need to. And then a little elastic in the back keeps it comfortable and from biting into your skin. There we go. This was our last introductory project. In this project, we used a straight seam and a rolled hem, and we did a finished seam on the inside here. We also talked about putting elastic through a casing um, and ribbon as well. And um, once you've done this project and the other two that were in the beginning series, you have everything you need to know to do almost any sewing project that you can think of. 
these are really the core skills. The only other skill that I can think of that you might need is gathering, and if we have time to show you how to do that later, we will. After this series, we're gonna move on to an intermediate series, working with knit fabrics, which can be a little more complicated, but are really useful techniques to know if you wanna fit t-shirts and sweatshirts and other knit things. All right, I'm Sophia, and this is The Geek Group. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.